Hello Skillet Boxers. Today, we are looking at perhaps the most destructive punch one can land in the sport of boxing. A favorite for shorter boxers, but also a weapon with many different applications. Today, we will go through the mechanics, different scenarios, and the pros and cons of this instinctive knockout punch. The overhand is a punch that has given us one of the best knockouts of the sport. Good left hand. Oh. But before we start the breakdown, we wanted to introduce you to our sponsor, Boxing Training for Fighters, the best home training program on the market. Build high level workouts, shuffle combos and get into fighting shape. Download Boxing Training for Fighters and master the sweet science. Save 15% with the link below. Now, let's start with the mechanics. Mechanics An overhand is a semicircular and vertical punch that goes over the opponent's hand as the name suggests. Yeah, there he's already and down. Oh. And down he goes again wow. from the left hand. Chance. His legs are not good. And down he goes again. Wow. That's it. It Another. is over. At its core, the overhand is a power punch designed to inflict as much damage as it can on the opponent. Proper stance and foot positioning are crucial since you will need a stable base to generate the momentum to create the overhand. The key is to start from a lower angle. Often on a crouched position. Then, using the kinetic linking principle, shifting the body slightly forward, you will be transferring that momentum from your legs to your torso and finally to your arms. This has to be all done in one synchronized movement to ensure that you're utilizing the full force of your body weight to generate as much power as possible. Once thrown, your hand goes in an arcing motion over the opponent's hand, usually aiming to land on the opponent's head or chin. If the opponent is at a shorter angle, then the arcing motion will follow through going downstairs. Now, let's take a look at the most common and useful scenarios in which we can see the overhand being thrown. Scenarios Lead hand as a setup. Any powerful punch, especially with the rear hand, has to be set up first, whether it's with a punch or a feint. You will often see the overhand set up with a jab first to get the opponent distracted or bring their guard down and create the opening for the overhand. Shots and Canelo just got the gap in the first two rounds. Now it does to opponents, even to big light heavyweight champion of the world. Impose the size. Joshua, big uppercut and a knockout. It has been uh, mostly Canelo. A different animal. In question. A very common combination is the jab to the body overhand to the head. Oh, that was a ball. The quality, the power. When setting up the overhand, because of its arcing motion and the slight level change before punching, any body attack is a great setup, especially the jab. A combination Mike Tyson used to frequently throw to set up powerful overhands. He would constantly change levels and jab to the body. I was going low, throwing my jab to his body, keeping his mind preoccupied with my jab to his body, and then unpredictable right hand coming up top in the corner. Getting in closer range to unleash the overhand. Castellano, of course. Uh... Other times, the lead hand is simply used as a feint to get the opponent to react low so the other boxer can land high. 84, four there's him downstairs, there's Trout trying to bounce in the past. Has... One of the most exemplifying sequences was Canelo Alvarez versus Amir Khan. Canelo was able to get Amir to jump on his feint, which led to his head being open for a powerful overhand. Inside slip counter. The overhand can not only be used to lead the action, but to counter attacks too. 
with his opponent. Oh! It is an especially good counter attack for the jab. He's very game and he's trying to turn this. The counter of the jab is available through an inside slip. And he's trying to turn this. As the opponent throws a jab, the inside slip positions you perfectly to unload an overhand that will go over the opponent's jab. Another way to counter the jab with an overhand, but getting another punch in, is with a 3 to the body, 8 to the head. Same as before, the inside slip positions you on the inside track with your weight on the lead leg side. That positions you for a hook to the body, followed by an overhand. Not shifting your weight for each punch, but maintaining the favoured position of the inside slip that allows you to throw the overhand. Because of that, it has to be a quick combo, but will also make the opponent more reactive. Jab, jab, oh. and straight. And you can see Kuba's overthinking it. Students, but the pressure actually reverse the hook and to try to find. A great example is Carmel Moton, who is pretty consistent with it. <laughs> bobbing and weaving to overhand. It can also be utilised in sync with bobbing and weaving movements. This is especially useful for shorter boxers like Tyson. Or in more recent cases, Isaac Cruz or Nick Ball. Seth, that was a smart cut. Isaac Cruz, the winner of this matchup, there's a big left. As Isaac Cruz, and if Cabrera, big left. Cruz, a left hook. The defensive sequence allows transitions to overhands with ease, making them more unpredictable. Exploiting openings. The overhand also enables it to exploit parts that are often unguarded, especially the top of the head. The high guard usually covers either the centre or the sides of the head. However, it leaves the top of the head completely open. Because the overhand is thrown in an arcing motion, it will find its mark on the top of the opponent's head as the trajectory of the punch is going downwards. He sat down on that punch. Do you think Haney responded? I think uh, Haney, he's doing, he's doing that, he's doing that. Now while this is a rare case, it is also worth mentioning. When Canelo fought Jamel, he would be constantly throwing wide hooks and overhands, getting Jamel to cover the side of his head. Canelo then changed the trajectory of his overhand, throwing it down the middle instead of wide, landing the overhand right through Jamel's guard. Back and lands a big... But now, let's get into some theory, and let's take a look at the pros and cons. Pros and cons. Pros. Solution for tall targets. While shorter boxers are at a disadvantage in long-range battles due to their smaller reach, the overhand not only allows them to target taller boxers, but also puts them in a great position to connect right on the chin of the opponent. Solution against ducking. On the other hand, the overhand is not only a great resource for short boxers, but also for taller boxers who have a hard time landing against shorter boxers with great head movement. But they need to, to change the plan. Oh, oh. A lot of boxers like to duck or roll on the power punches when they see them coming. Uh, yeah, I see he, he leans to the right side every time and we worked on that shot in the back room. Touch, touch, and then chop. And since the overhand can also be thrown in a downward motion, it is a good solution to catch them as they duck following through with the punch. See a lot of leather checking in there. Cons. Readable, difficult setup. As destructive as the overhand is, setting it up can be difficult at times. The upset of the year in the making. And there's no doubt that Canelo Alvarez... Ah. The distance the punch needs to travel to reach its target takes longer since it is not a punch thrown straight down the middle. And in boxing, seconds are like hours. Oftentimes they are more predictable and easier to read. To find a way to knock you out. 
touch to land by the power up to 140. Off balance. Another issue of the overhand is that because you are putting so much body weight into it, it can often leave you off balance. This is especially apparent during wild exchanges. Getting off balanced gives the opponent an opportunity to capitalize and counter your overhand attack. C'est des actifs! C'était tout l'attitude de Tyson! The overhand is one of those more instinctive and eye-catching punches in boxing. But it also has to be set up properly for it to be able to do the damage it can do. But now, we would love to know your opinion on the comments. How do you set up your overhands? When do you like to use it? Let us know, and if you like this video, you can find out more on our channel. And to your left, we have chosen a video that we thought you may like.